My name is Dan Freeman of Kenjo, and I welcome you to Kentech 9060, a YouTube channel to educate you on renewable energy and the relevance of power system. This current division is, is mostly applied to power circuit, and the rule states that the current in any branch is equal to the ratio of the opposite resistance to the total resistance multiplied by the total current. So if I want to, there is a power connection because R1 is in power with R2. So when this voltage source drives a current, which is I plus I2, so from Kettle, I is equal to I1 plus I2. Now using current division rule, for you to calculate the current I1, which is flowing through resistor I1, the rule states that the current in any branch is equal to the ratio. So whenever you talk of ratio, it should be you should have a numerator and a denominator. So the current in any branch is equal to the ratio of the opposite resistance. So the opposite resistance of R1 is R2 over the total resistance, which is R1 plus R2, multiplied by the total current, and the total current is I. So if I want to calculate the current I2, I2 will be equal to R1 over R1 plus R2 times I. So let's quickly look at how this formula came into existence. The circuit diagram on the board, you realize that R1 and R2 are connected in parallel. And whenever resistors are connected in parallel, they share the same voltage. Now, this source voltage will drive a current, which is I. Since they are connected in parallel, these two resistors will share the source current. So if this is I, current flowing through I1 is I1, and this is I2. Therefore, from Kirchhoff's current law, I is equal to I1 plus I2. Then, since they are connected in parallel, we need we have the same what, voltage. So here I can also write I1 R1 equal to I2 R2 because the voltage here should be equal to the voltage here. So I can label this as equation one, this as equation two. Then I will so I will make I1 the subject from this from equation two. So I1 is equal to I2 R2 all over R1. Then I'll substitute this into equation one. So I is equal to I2 R2 all over R1 plus I2. Then I'll factor I2 out, giving me R2 R1 plus 1 I2. Remember, I want to calculate for I2, which is the current flowing through resistor R2. So therefore, I2 will be equal to 1 will be equal to I over R2 over R1 plus 1. And this can be further simplified to produce I2 giving R1 over R1 plus R2 times I. Simplify this circuit. And we are supposed to find the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Then find the current flowing through resistor R2 and R3. R2 and R3. So from here, to find the equivalent resistance, we realize that R2 is in parallel with R3. So 10 ohm is in parallel with 10 ohm. And the equivalent resistance here will be 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10. All raise the power 1, giving us 5 ohm. Now this 5 ohm will be in series with 
R1, which is one ohm resistor. So one ohm in series with five ohms. And whenever resistors are connected in series, we need to add the resistance. So one plus five. We give six ohms. Now one is find the current flowing through R2 and R3. Now remember the RT, which is the total resistance, is giving us six ohms. But from ohms law, V is equal to IR. Therefore, my current will be equal to voltage over resistance. And the voltage is 80 volt over 6 ohms, giving us 3 amps. So the current which is produced by the source voltage is 3 amps. So here I can say that if this is I, this will be equal to I2 and this will be equal to I3. So I is equal to so from catch off current law, I is equal to I2 plus I3. So if I have the current entering the junction, it should be equal to current leaving the junction. And here we can apply the current divider rule to calculate the current entering, let's say, resistor R2. So for R2, it will be equal to, for current entering R2, so for current, I2 I2 will be equal to R3 over R2 plus R3 times I so here will be equal to 10 over 20 times 3 giving us 1.5 amps now if I2 is equal to 1.5 then definitely I3 is also going to be equal to 1.5 because we said I is equal to I2 plus I3. So if I have I2 to be equal to 3, so I is equal to 3, 3, and I have I2 to be equal to 1.5 plus I3. So if I want to calculate for I3 here, I3 will be equal to 1.5 amps. This will be the end to today's educative session. I hope you have learned something new today. Please, if you are new to this channel, Kindly subscribe and watch out for this piece. Leave your questions and answers in the comment section. See you in our next video.